My name is Meredith and I'll be presenting with Juan and Daniela and today we're going to be talking about bioluminescence. So what exactly is bioluminescence? When you break down the word you get bio which means living and then luminescence which means light. So bioluminescence is just living light. Organisms that can bioluminesce have chemical reactions to produce light in their body. This can happen in any organ that produces light in the organism. For example, the firefly's abdomen is where the chemical reaction takes place. You might be thinking, how exactly does light come from a chemical reaction? Well, we need three ingredients, oxygen, luciferin, and luciferase. They all come together to produce photons, and photons are the molecules that create the light, making the organism glow in the dark. There are different ways that an organism can glow. They can get it from their food, in mutualistic relationships, or they can produce it all on their own. The midshipmen fish eat shrimp that have an ingredient to help the fish bioluminesce. The picture in the bottom left corner is a seed shrimp. It is so small that you can't see it with the naked eye, and as soon as the fish eat enough of the shrimp, the chemical reaction starts to take place. Another way organisms can glow is a mutualistic relationship. These are relationships that help both organisms involved. For example, the Hawaiian bobtail squid has bacteria in the body causing it to glow. And lastly, some organisms can just produce light all on their own by having the ability to create the chemical reaction on their own. An example of this is fireflies. What colors do you think most bioluminescent organisms glow? Red, blue, green, or yellow? If you chose blue-green, you are correct. Blue-green is the most common because it can be seen farther in any, than any other color in the deep, dark water. But, of course, there are exceptions to this. The dragonfish is actually produces red light, and some organisms can produce yellow light like fireflies, and others can produce more than one color. Click beetles actually have two light-producing organs, where one is green and the other glows red. So. Taking a look at the numbers, about 90% of organisms that can glow are in the depths of the ocean. This is because on land it's only dark at night, and it wouldn't be necessary for them to glow all day. Less than 20% of organisms' light is generated by heat, and there are no bioluminescent organisms native to freshwater habitats. So you might be thinking, why did glowing evolve in the first place? Well, there are many different reasons, such as attracting a mate, help finding food, to camouflage, for communication, and defense. Examples of these are that fireflies glow to help attract mates. Anglerfish actually attract food with their shiny light to distract the fish, and then they strike, and voila, they got dinner. Others try to blend in with the sun by lighting up to help camouflage them. And some creatures can even blink their lights to communicate with their friends. Click beetles' spots flash at night, giving predators the appearance that they are big and scary. And these are just a few examples of why glowing evolved. In the previous slide, we discussed a few adaptations, and now we're going to provide examples for each. Starting with fireflies, and I'm sure you guys are familiar with this organism because we see it a lot on land. Both males and female fireflies are bioluminescent. So, how do males use bioluminescent light to attract females? Well, the pattern of their flashes tells females what species of firefly they are and that they're interested in mating. A few features of their body includes an exoskeleton, three body parts, and the fact that they're soft body. The next organism we're going to discuss is the vampire squid. It is neither a vampire or a squid. A squid normally lives near the surface, however, a vampire squid lives in the depths of the ocean, and down there, an ink sac would be useless because it's too dark. So, the bioluminescent light they eject is an evolutionary characteristic. They have three sources of light, two large organs called photophores at the tips of the arm and the base of its two fins, that they can turn them off or on. So, what do I mean by that? If they need to be invisible and hide from predators, they will turn it off. And if they need to attract prey, then they will turn it on. And so on. The other source of light is seen why they feel threatened, because they eject bioluminescent mucus from the tips of the arm instead of ink. One of the most famous predators to use bioluminescence, well in my opinion anyways, 
is the anglerfish, and you can actually recognize this picture from a scene from the movie Finding Nemo. You can see Dory and Nemo at the bottom. So, at the top of its huge head, you can see a long thin filament hanging from there. It's a ball. That ball is called esca, and it can be turned on and off. It projects light, and it's used to attract prey. A smaller fish might be curious about the spot of light, so it'll swim closer, and by the time they realize what's really behind that light, it's too late to run. Of course, that wasn't the case for Dorian and Nemo. And so, the anglerfish uses this to attract prey. In addition to that feature, they have, like I mentioned, a huge head, sharp teeth, and the long thin filament that hangs from its head with the esca. Next, we have the hatchet fish. They use bioluminescent light as a camouflage. They have wing-like pectoral fins, which they can use to leap out of the water and catch a prey. They have large tubular eyes, and because they've been down in the uh, depth of the ocean for so long, their eyes are actually extremely sensitive to light. They have light-producing organs that adjust to the light from above, so if a predator is passing under them, the predator is going to look up, like for example, if it was a shark, it's going to look up. And because they won't be able to distinguish the hatchet fish from the light that's coming from above, it will keep going. So they use it as the camouflage. Hello, my name is Juan. Today I'm going to talk to you about how a single jellyfish changed signs. A Japanese scientist named Osamu Shimomura had a question. What makes a jellyfish glow? And around the Japanese waters, there's a jellyfish called the crystal jelly, which is pictured on the left. With this curiosity, he conducted a study and he found out that the jellyfish makes a protein he called green fluorescent protein, which is that protein right there in the middle. And this is what we see that is actually glowing. There's also a picture of him on the right, and in that test tube, he has this green fluorescent protein. And you can see that it actually glows really, really brightly.
Knowing that the instructions to make this protein are inside the DNA, a scientist by the name of Martin Chalfie placed the instructions for these proteins in other animals. This allowed him to track where it was made and where it went. And you can see a picture on the right of all the organisms that he tested on, ranging from bunnies, fish, plants, mice, even insects, and even microscopic animals. Once all this research was published, a scientist by the name of Roger Cien decided to further the research. He took the green fluorescent protein and he made a lot of variants that were much colorful and brighter. On the picture on the left on the top, you can see all the variants he made, all the different colors, and how some of them glow really brightly. Below that is a petri dish, and for those who don't know what a petri dish is, it's a dish or a plate that has a lot of food on it where microorganisms can actually survive. So to demonstrate that they work, he took them and put them inside the microorganisms and then he grew it on the petri dish and he was able to create this beach scene, which is what they call it. His research allowed us to be able to study
But let me know, what's y'all's favorite color? My favorite color and names were Monometric Banana and Tandem Dimer Tomato. Another cool bioluminescent fish is the dragonfish. This deep sea fish has photophores, which are the light producing organs. They produce light to attract prey and signal mate. So just like anglerfish, if you notice on the picture on the right, below its jaw, it has this very long extension. At the end of this extension, there's a lot of photophores which produce light, and this is how it catches its prey. But on the picture on the left, you could also see that along its entire body, it actually has photophores as well. And this is used to attract and signal potential mates and other individuals from the same species. Another cool adaptation about dragonfish is that they actually don't only glow blue, they actually glow red as well, just like Meredith mentioned. And this is an adaptation because most animals that are bioluminescent only light up in the blue spectrum. So being able to light up red keeps them hidden from predators, but still allows them to signal other individuals of the same species. After having seen all the organisms, we like to also compare the habitat. Fireflies are found all around the world in every continent except Antarctica. In the USA, they're on the east coast. Vampire squids live in tropical and subtropical oceans, ranging from 300 meters to about 3,000 meters. Hatchetfish are from Central and South America. Anglerfish are deep in the Atlantic and Antarctic Oceans. And dragonfish are Atlantic and in the Gulf of Mexico.
Thank you so much for having given us your attention, and I hope you enjoyed.